Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita fillah listen to this beautiful hadith of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and it comes from a taqrib li hikam wa ahkam sahih targhib wa tarhib li lil hafiz al mundhari rahimahullah ta'ala and it is explained the the book of ikhlas kitab al ikhlas by our shaykh shaykh uh, Suleiman al-Rahili, Hafizullah Ta'ala. Listen to these fawaid and these pearls. And this is another benefit before we talk about this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam, which is talking about the importance of ikhlas lillah and also talking about the importance, uh, letting, uh, the importance that all believers have value. And you'll see what I mean as we get into the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and from the benefits of the Shaykh. And the last thing I want to mention, and this is a fa'idah kabira from studying with the ulama and those people who Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala favors to go and seek knowledge and sit at the feet of the ulama. What a ni'mah min ni'amillah. This is a blessing from amongst the many blessings of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala because I can guarantee you that there is nothing in this dunya that helps to increase the Iman and encourage you with khair than sitting with Ahl al-Ilm. If your heart is open, if your heart is open, you just find a world of fawaid. And from those ulama is our Shaykh, Shaykh Suleiman al-Rahili, Hafidullah Ta'ala. And I used to say this after attending some of his durus uh, when he would teach in Masjid Durul Nurain next to the Haram. And he would teach some books in fiqh, like Minara Sabil and other things. And one of his durus, even if it was just, uh, you know, a single dars, which might be, uh, you know, an hour to an hour and a half, you know, between Asr and Maghrib or whatever, depending on the time. The benefits, you felt almost dizzy when you left there from the favor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored him with knowledge. And sometimes you felt overwhelmed with his knowledge and Shaykh Suleiman al-Rahili Hafidullah Ta'ala especially he loves to teach he is an educator not all the ulama are on the same level in knowledge not all the ulama are the same level in wisdom not all the ulama are the same level in fiqh not all the ulama are in the same level in their ability to convey knowledge he can convey knowledge with quwa and strength and you see that he loves it when you turn him on you begin a dars it's over meaning over that it's 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 a done deal it's it's the knowledge that's going to come out it's like a computer and it needs to be recorded unless you can write those for I because he loves to teach and you'll see it in his smile he loves to teach and he's a fantastic educator and he has the, the scholars bear witness to that now let's listen to this hadith of the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam very quickly an Mus'ab ibn Sa'ad an Abihi radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma annahu dhanna anna lahu fadl ala man dunihi min ashab rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam faqala nabiyyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam innama yansurullahu hadhihi al-umma bi da'ifiha be dawa to him, wa salati him, wa ikhlasi him, ruahu nisai, wa gayrahu, wa huwa fil bukhari, wa gayrahu, duni dhikr al ikhlas. Qala al albani sahih. Imam al albani uh, judged this hadith to be a sound hadith, and also you'll find it in Bukhari except. Uh, without mentioning ikhlas in it. So in this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, the hadith of Mus'ab ibn Sa'ad, he's the son of Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas, radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma. Uh, so he narrated this on his father, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. He said that he thought uh, that he had a, a, a fadl, you know, that he had some, some, some sort of superiority over the rest of the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam meaning Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiyallahu ta'ala who are uh, from the Mubash, uh, Ashra Mubashirina fil Jannah he's from the ten who were guaranteed paradise by the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam and so with that uh, you know because of his bravery and some, some other attributes he had that he 
thought that he had a kind of superiority over the other companions and, and that he should receive a little bit more in the ghanima, you know, in the war booties, the war spoils. So Musab ibn Sa'd, he narrated, he said, my father basically thought that he deserved a little something extra uh, in comparison to the companions, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, ajma'in. And the prof, then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, verily, Allah aids this nation with, it, with the weak ones from it or with the weak one from it with their supplications or through their supplications and their prayer and their sincerity and their ikhlas and this is in Nisa'i and other than it uh, Sheikh Suleiman he mentioned some great benefits so before before we get into just a few benefits of the Sheikh because it's pages of benefits uh, just for to make sure we understand so in this hadith of the Prophet وسلم, the Messenger وسلم, is letting us know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aids his religion even through through everyone from the religion, not just the wealthy, not just the strong, but even the weak from amongst our religion, those who may be physically weak in their bodies or weak in, in other ways. But they the way he aids the religion is by their supplication. And that shows us the importance of supplication. And through their sincerity that they have a khlas lillah. And also through their prayer. So it lets us know the importance of salat. All of those acts of ibadah. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Inna ma'amalu bin yad, Verily actions are tied to the intention. So it's very important to make all of your worship sincerely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Supplicate to Allah. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and his favor and grace and mercy. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, from the benefits the Sheikh mentions, one of the things he says, well, if you have a hadith Ivan, so he had already mentioned some benefits. He mentioned one of the benefits, he said, is this hadith shows us the importance of being humble, of having tawadah, you know, being humble because this was a way of uh, the Prophet وسلم, was addressing Sa'd, radiallahu ta'ala, in, in which he thought that he had a kind of superiority and maybe he deserved, and the Prophet وسلم, was kind of like saying Sa'd, you know, be humble because just because you're strong in this, there are others who are weak and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aids his deen with them as well. And so this is a way and, and shows us the importance of, of, of being humble and to not uh, become arrogant. You know, that's for us to learn this lesson. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may uh, aid the religion and may produce benefit from someone who you may not think has benefit. So the Sheikh then he said, So the Sheikh he mentions also from this hadith is that the Ibra, as we always say this principle, the reality of something is in its substance, not in its name. So here the Shaykh mentioned another Qaida, which is Far'in, which is a, a, a branch of that Qaida, that same principle. He said, the, 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 the importance of something is not in its look. You know, we can't say, oh, so-and-so is so handsome and beautiful that they're in Jannah. And so-and-so, she's like this. Uh, she's, you know, this is a sign of her goodness. No, it's not through the sur. It's not through the looks, nor the body. Nor the body. And that is also witnessed in a hadith of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet said, Verily Allah does not look to your forms, nor your bodies. So the external stuff, it really, it means everything to us. We like beauty, we like handsome, we like strong, we like this, we like that. But it doesn't mean anything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing. Verily Allah doesn't look to your, your, your forms. Nor does he look to your, uh, uh, to your bodies. Well, instead, he looks to your hearts. 
and your deeds. Allah knows your deeds. And so this is what the, the Shaykh is mentioning this. He didn't mention that hadith, but this is a shahid. This is showing and illustrating what the Shaykh is saying from Nusuls, from the text of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So then he says, and for the sake of time, we're going to just bring it in English. So he said that, therefore, the one who's weak in his body and weak in his, his status... He said, you know, he could be weak in his status. He could not be the most, you know, prominent person in your community or whatever the case may be. People may look down on him. That, that those things are not looked at by Eliza or Joe. And he may proceed or surpass those people who are wealthy. And those people who, who people like to, to look at and people who are, people like... Um, or pleased with whatever, so he said. So he said, he said because the most important, you know, the one Allah Subhanahu wa Taala looks looks at, is the one who fears Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the Almighty, and the one who is graced and honored with the most God-fearfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another benefit the Shaykh mentioned, uh, and we'll end it here, and he says that the ulama, they mention that the ways that a person, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aids his religion is through these things. He said, uh, so he says there are six reasons why the, the, the ummah can be raised up. Six reasons why the ummah, uh, get, where they get their honor from and their status and to get raised up from the humility and, and disgrace that they may be in. He says first, is ibadah khalis khashia is through uh, worship which is hum, you know, hu, hu, humble worship, that's sincere. Humble, fearful, sincere worship. That's the first way we get our honor back. Second, he says, uh, the, the, also the strength, the, the, the strength of defending, of defense and defending ourselves. He said also that the imam of the Muslims is heard and obeyed. That you listen and obey the leader. He then also mentioned, well, al nafia and beneficial knowledge. He then mentioned, al-amr bi maruf munkar, to command the good and forbid the evil. And the last thing he said, wa jama'atun, mutahida, ghayr mutafaraka. He said, and a unified body of Muslims, unity instead of divisions. So those are the ways that the scholars, he said, قَالَ ulama. This is the ulama, meaning the classical scholars, the salaf, up until now, that these are the things that they mention are the ways for the ummah to get back on track and have izzah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a class with the batna. Bless our shaykh. Bless all of the ulama of Ahl sunnah qadim and wahadith, and those who passed away, and those who are living. May Allah have mercy upon them all, and bless them all with jannah to fardos, and forgive them all of their sins and mistakes. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ikhlas, with the bat. And may Allah wa ta'ala bless our brothers and sisters who are being oppressed. For example, the Igors in China. Don't forget them. Our brothers and sisters in Burma. Our brothers and sisters in all over Africa and very As African nations. Our brothers and sisters in America, our brothers and sisters in the UK, wherever they're suffering, wherever they're having difficulty, our brothers and sisters who are reverts, who don't find the love and the unity that they need and the assistance and the support. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make their affairs easy and raise them up on a high and powerful level and bless us all with Jannah to Fardos.